there are three main types of capillaries, and we're going to take a look at them now. The first type of cap capillary is the most abundant, and it's found in places like the skin, the muscles, lungs, the central nervous system. And these are referred to as continuous capillaries um, of the brain. They're very unique. And what they do is they form what's called the blood-brain barrier. And the blood-brain barrier is very, very important to um, prevent the brain from being exposed to toxins. And it's enclosed with these tight junctions. And you'll see the tight junctions in this diagram here. And the tight junction seals the epithelial cells, the endothelial cells, the type of epithelial cell, so that nothing can get through those be from the cap it, nothing can get from the blood vessel into the tissue that is surrounding it. So they often have these associated cells called parasites around them. The next type of capillary is referred to as a fenestrated capillary. And the fenestrated capillary is going to have, um, it's going to ha have much more um, larger pores in it. It's, uh, the endothelial cells can kind of be described like Swiss cheese. And it's very important for this increased permeability to allow more molecules to go through. So we find this in places like the kidneys the intestine because of absorption of molecules from the digestive tract so that makes sense to us hopefully and so there's active absorption of nutrients that occur in the GI tract with these capillaries the third type of capillary is referred to as the sinusoidal capillary and it has very few tight junctions it is fenestrated like the last one but it allows, it's even more porous, so it's the most porous of all three types. So the continuous doesn't allow anything through, the fenestrated is more permeable, and this is the most permeable, the sinusoidal. And they are found in places like the liver, the bone marrow, spleen, and also the adrenal medulla. And so it contains macrophages in the lining to capture and destroy foreign invaders so um, with these different capillaries now we want to talk about the capillary network themselves and the capillary network is an interwoven network of small capillaries that's between the arterioles and the venules and the main function of capillary beds is for exchange of molecules so Leading into the capillary, um, this um, there's a pre-capillary sphincter that constricts or dilates, which controls whether the capillaries are dilated or constricted. So the arteriole and the terminal arteriole dilate when blood is needed, and they constrict to shut off blood from getting into that area. And because these blood vessels are so small, and this control of blood as it goes from the afferent end to the venual end is um, called referred to as microcirculation. And so let's look at the anatomy of a typical capillary bed here. So the capillary bed is going to have um, the arterial end, and that's going to be where blood is leading into the capillaries, starts at the terminal arteriole, so that's the end of the arteriole, leading into the capillary. So there are precapillary sphincters there that constrict or dilate, and they're controlled by the autonomic nervous system. Then leading out of the capillary is the post-capillary venule, which also plays a role in whether blood goes into the into this capillary area or doesn't. So Letter A is showing the arterioles dilated, and B is showing the arterioles constricted, where no blood is going into that capillary bed. So capillaries are found in serous membranes, and they're in the serous membranes of intestinal mesenteries, which have two additional features as well. 
there's what's called the vascular shunt. And the vascular shunt is um, the channel that directly connects arteria with the venule. So this bypasses the true capillaries. And there's also the precapillary sphincter, which we've already talked about. And the precapillary sphincters are cuffs of smooth muscle, and they constrict or they dilate to allow more blood to go into that capillary bed. So the anatomy of these special capillaries, the mesenteric capillaries, are as we see on this diagram, and we see the precapillary sphincters. So the, in this case, they're closed, so they're constricted, and they're not allowing blood to go into this capillary bed. However, when blood flow goes into the intestinal blood vessels, and the intestinal blood vessels are referred to as mesenteric blood vessels, these precapillary sphincters would dilate to allow the blood to go into that. And because this blood vessel kind of bypasses this area, it's referred to as this vascular shunt, and therefore a thoroughfare channel.